So in this session, uh, we'll take up the problem related to welded connections. And in the first problem, what we have is a groove weld. So there are two plates of uh, 18 mm and uh, 16 mm thickness, what have been used. And uh, they have been connected with the help of a butt weld. The effective length of the weld is 200 mm. And you need to find what is the strength of this joint when a single groove weld is provided and second when a double groove weld is provided. The property of steel is given as Fu equal to 410 Newton per mm square. That is the ultimate tensile strength of 410 Newton per mm square. And uh, the factor of safety for welds gamma MW is mentioned as 1.25. So what is the strength of the weld? We need to know how much will be the strength of the weld since it is given that it is a groove weld. So in the groove weld, the design strength is governed by the yield stress or FWD is expressed as FY upon gamma MW. Groove weld, they are subjected to direct tension. So this yield stress will be governing the strength of the weld and it is given by FY upon gamma MW yield stress divided by factor of safety so there is no property of weld what is given in this problem in such cases when a property of weld is not mentioned so we can take the properties of the parent material that is a steel what has been given because the welds what we provide they are uh, of higher grade than the uh, parent material so if you are connecting two plates of ultimate tensile strength 410 newton per mm square the weld what should be provided should be at least equal to 410 newton per mm square or more than that so we can stick to the property of the steel if you don't have any properties of the weld given in your problem so that is what i have taken here if if e is equal to 410 it's fi yield stress will be 210 newton per mm square so with that, the strength of the weld FWD will be 250 upon 1.25, that is 200 Newton per mm square. This is the design stress in the weld. So first case, when a single V groove is provided, what you find is there will be partial penetration of the weld. The welds will not be able to penetrate completely through the thickness of these plates. So there will be partial penetration. So in such cases, when single V groove is provided or when a single U groove is provided, the effective throat thickness here will be five by eight times the thickness of thinnest member. So five by eight into 16 because 16 is the thickness of the thinnest member here. Two plates are of 18 and 16 mm. So in this calculation of effective throat thickness, we'll go with thinnest member so 5 by 8 into 16 it will be 10 mm effective throat thickness is 10 mm effective length is given as 200 newton per mm square so the strength of the joint will be design stress multiplied by effective length and the effective throat thickness 200 design stress into 200 mm effective length and 10 is the effective throat thickness what we have calculated here so this will be 400 kilo newtons the strength of the joint comes out to be 400 kilo newton in case of single v groove second case is when double v groove is provided so what you have is the welding will be carried out from both sides of the joint that is this uh, edge will be be weld and you will be doing the welding from both the ends so in such cases there will be a complete penetration of the weld into these members and the effective throat thickness will come out to be equal to the thickness of thinnest member so here it will be 16 mm the thinnest member is 16 mm so te will be 16 mm here and strength of joint will be the design stress multiplied by effective length and the throat thickness so 200 into 200 into 16 so that will give us 640 kilonewton as the strength of the joint so that is how you deal with this two cases of uh, partial penetration and complete penetration of the weld in case of groove welds the design stress will be governed by yield stress and throat thickness will be decided based on whether it is a single or a double groove so that is about uh, the problem is about here and uh, <clears throat> in the second case we have a design problem over here 
so there is a member which is carrying a axial factored load of 500 kilonewton the member is ismc 150 and this member needs to be connected with a gusset plate of 10 mm thickness and there is a restriction on overlapping maximum overlapping that is permitted is 250 mm so this overlap of gusset plate and the channel section cannot exceed 250 mm grade of steel what we are given is fe410 grade and welds what are being used are shop welds so the size of the weld if you want to decide the size of the weld it depends on what size of the members you are connecting mainly what is the thickness of the members which have been connected over here so there is a restriction on minimum and maximum size of the welds so minimum size is governed by this table table 21 of is 800 so here you will find based on different plate thicknesses what will be the minimum size of the weld that has to be provided so for plates up to 10 mm thickness it is 3 mm now if you look at the properties of ismc what you have is its depth is 150 mm and the web thickness because we are going to provide the weld on this edge over here so that will be providing the weld on the web so i require what is the thickness of web in this case so it is 5.4 so for plates up to 10 mm so here it is 5.4 gusset plate thickness is 10 mm so we'll be considering the smallest thickness that is 5.4 mm over here and based on that for thickness up to and including 10 mm the minimum size of weld is 3 mm so minimum size what we have chosen is 3 mm from this table based on our plate thicknesses or the member thicknesses which have been welded together and the maximum size it depends whether the member what you are connecting is having a square edge like this or a rounded edge this rounded edge will normally come across when you are using angle sections so the leg of the angle will be of such flat shape which will be rounded over here so in case of square edges you need to provide a clearance of 1.5 mm on the edges and in this case it will be the clearance will be one fourth the thickness of this member so maximum size here will be in our case this square will be having a square edge so it will be the thickness of the web minus 1.5 so 5.4 minus 1.5 comes out to be 3.9 mm this is the maximum size of the weld so we have to decide the weld size in between these two limits so here 3 mm 3.9 mm are the limits so what we'll do is we'll uh, stick to 3 mm as our weld size so the fillet welds what we are going to provide will be of 3 mm in size and the design strength so in case of fillet welds the design strength is given by fwn upon gamma mw fwn is the nominal shear strength of the fillet welds which is equal to fu by root 3 so 410 upon root 3 it comes out as 236.7 newton per mm square so to get the design strength we require the factor of safety and table 5 will tell us what will be the factor of safety for welds so in this table 5 is a table for partial safety factors for materials and for welds and shop welds what is there in our problem it is 1.25 gamma mw is 1.25 so using this factor of safety of 1.25 what we have is the design strength will be 236.7 divided by 1.25 189.36 newton per mm square and what effective throat thickness we have is te which is 0 0.707 times the size of the weld so 0 0.707 into 3 it comes out as 2.1 mm this is our effective throat thickness so what length of weld is required the load what we have is 500 kilonewtons so 500 into 10 raised to 3 newton divided by design stress in the weld multiplied by the effective throat thickness it will tell you what is the length of the weld that is required so it is coming out as 1257 mm so that is the length of the weld what has to be provided over here on this channel section so this length 
is not available for us because what we have is overlap length what is permitted is 250 mm so 250 on top 250 on bottom 500 mm and this will be 150 mm the depth of the chan section so 500 plus 150 what we is this is uh, 650 mm so i can only provide 650 mm on this very very over here so what is required is 1257 mm length of the bed so in this case what we need to do is we have to provide the slots over here so we'll be cutting the slots in this channel section so that the perimeter or the weld length can be accommodated over here so we are increasing this perimeter in this overlap and we'll be providing the welding over here so what uh, slots we need to cut what length of the slots have to be cut is so out of 1257 or say 1260 mm required length of the weld we already have uh, 650 mm that is 250 plus 150 400 plus 150 650 is available so 1260 minus 650 610 mm uh, length has to be accommodated in the slots so if i provide two slots of 180 mm what i have is 180 plus 180 360 and 360 360 620 so i will be able to accommodate the weld length of 610 mm over here so what we'll do is we'll provide two slots of 180 mm length in this channel and we'll provide the weld length within this so total weld length what we are going to provide will be 650 plus the 620 so 1270 required is 1257 what we have provided is 1270 mm so that will be sufficient so that is how you need to accommodate in case if you have don't have the sufficient perimeter on which welding can be done so either by these slots or it may be sometimes accommodated with the help of plug welds slot welds like that one more problem what i'm leaving for your practice is this design of weld on for a tension member okay so you have already come across uh, the design of weld for angle section symmetric and unsymmetric welds based on that you need to practice this particular third problem okay thank you